For those not old enough to remember, going into a store like Electronic Boutique or GameStop was a little bit like roulette. You never knew what would happen, and you had no idea if a game was good or not. There just wasn't enough information out there. Social media really didn't exist, and communication to and from development studios and customer was very faint. Would a game be good or be bad? Would this game address the issues from predecessors? No one knew, and each game was a leap of faith. But today, we live in a different era. We can share our wishes, our complaints, and the development studios can have a direct line to us. This is exciting because something that hasn't happened in a long time is happening. A net new combat flight simulator is being made, and this means that we can get a lot of visibility to it and understand what is being thought of as it's being made. With how social media works, the more we engage with content like videos, the more we tell the algorithms to spread the video out to other people to make the community even bigger, which can make a game even a larger success. So in a sense, we are part of this project as well. Today, I'm interviewing Jason Williams, the former president of 7-7 Studios, the studio that created Rise of Flight, the former executive producer of IO2 Great Battles, and a founder and current executive producer of Combat Pilot by Etropy Arrow, a division of Barbed Wire Studios. While this project is still in its early stages, Jason wanted to give us some visibility into it, to let us know where it is at, to share the ambitions, and to make us part of this project. With early communication like this, with, we begin to build a new community and to start to make sure that this game is ready to be received, not by a few, but many people who are hungry for a combat flight simulator, that is made with today's standards without the baggage of older engines. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. Today we're joined by Jason Williams, the project lead on Combat Pilot, which is a very interesting project in the sim gaming space. Interesting because it's net new. And when I think about the sim space and the current games that are available on the market, pretty much just a handful of games that have existed for a long time. So we're very familiar with them, but this is a net new project. So I'm very excited for this chat. So Jason, I thought what would be interesting to start off with is, um, you know, this announcement comes off after you working on the IL2 Great Battles project. So kind of curious on just checking in on what you do with your time off. Uh, hopefully you, you had some time to rest and uh, kind of how much time did you take off before jumping back into things? First of all, thanks for having me, Enigma. Um... I appreciate you giving me the time and space to talk a little bit about Combat Pilot. Um, what you're doing with your channel is a, a lot of fun and good for the genre. It's always uh, nice to know that there are people out there who are interested in this hobby and this uh, uh, genre and um, just keep up the good work. Um, yeah, when I left uh, 1C, uh, you know, I left last summer and it became public knowledge in the fall. Uh, so not a whole lot of time to do much except, you know, reevaluate my professional life and what I wanted to do next. Um, I had plans to start a different type of business that I've been thinking about for a long time. Nothing that was necessarily related to, to flight simming. But eventually people started reaching out to me once they realized I was, my, my, uh, my time was available and eventually... Uh, got in contact with uh, our friends at uh, Barbed Wire Studios, namely their CEO, Carlos, who was interested in working with me on a on a project. So we started uh, talking about the possibilities, and uh, the rest is history at this point. So not a whole lot of time off. I didn't take any kind of grand vacation or take a European cruise or travel around the world or anything like that. I wish I did, but no. Nope. It was pretty much back to how can we make a flight sim or make a combat flight sim and uh, how can we get to the Pacific? So, I mean, I, I believe you live in Vegas. So uh, I, I find it interesting because, uh, you know, Vegas is known for gambling. And I would imagine a project like this is a really big gamble. Um, I was talking to someone the other day and I they asked me, why do you think there's so few new sim games? And, I, and my answer was... Um, from my point of view at least, was that uh, it's a small niche that's dominated by companies that have had basically a 20-year lead start. So I would imagine that a project like this is a big gamble, or at least on paper. 
Um, and I was really surprised and delighted to hear that you're working with Barbar Studios because I, I am really familiar with their game, uh, Call to Arms Ostrom, which I think is probably the best RTS right now, like, like especially for, for World War II. So how did you get uh, matched up with them? Well, they reached out to me uh, as fans of Flight Simming in general, but more specifically, um, they liked uh, people on their team enjoyed playing great battles and, of course, the original Sturmovic. And it just so happened that uh, Carlos is a certified aerospace engineer who was already working on uh, uh, the technology to make a flight sim and flight models uh, to a high degree of fidelity. So he had already done some initial legwork and some research and programming to potentially bring a new flight sim to market. Uh, he knew that I wanted to do the Pacific Theater, and he knew that I was now available. So it was just a matter of, hey, do we think we can do this? Do we think we have we can get the money? And you know, do we think we know the people that could help build uh, what turned into Combat Pilot? And uh, I set out looking for money and other people to join the team, and Carlos did the same, but in a more technical fashion. I'm looking at it more from the content and uh, uh, money side of things. And after discussions with several different parties over the next few months uh, and some kind of false starts and promises that didn't work out, we came to the point where we were able to gain funding to make our initial prototype. And that person who wants to remain nameless is willing to put up a significant amount of cash, as well as barbed wire, uh, put up uh, enough cash to allow us to make our initial prototype. Uh, and I could talk a little bit more about what's going to be included in that prototype. Now, is the prototype going to be a, a product available for resale? Um, we don't know yet because we don't know exactly what's going to be in it. We only have our general plan uh, that we're implementing. And it depends. Uh, is the investor that we're working with and barbed wire going to want to put up the rest of the money we need to make the full blown product? Or are we going to go out and get some more third party funding, which uh, there are some third parties out there that are interested in working with us and helping fund us. Um, but we've decided that until we have our working prototype with uh, aircraft, flying through 3D space and able to land on aircraft carriers and dogfight each other and shoot each other down, that until we have those fundamentals done or ready or available, um, we're not going to be searching for further funding. But it is a big gamble. I do live in Las Vegas. I love living here. I went to school here. Um, I'm from Southern California, but... Many, many people from California have moved to Nevada over the years, and it's a great place to live. And uh, yeah, the town was built on gambling, not winning, because we, like we say here, I mean, it's called gambling for a reason, not winning, because, uh, you know, uh, tourists and locals gamble like crazy here. And uh, when they lose, that money goes to the tax base and uh, helps keep my taxes low, so I can't complain. Uh, but yeah, it's a big gamble to make to make uh, a flight sim, especially a combat flight sim. As I've said in other interviews, you know, it's it used to be the example, and I guess in some ways it still is with what others have done. It's uh, a great example of what a computer can do, but over time, it's become one of the more difficult games to actually make because there's not necessarily off-the-shelf solutions you can buy to just piece together a combat flight sim. Most combat flight sims in the past have been built with a custom engine. Many of them still are. Well, actually, most of them are built with a custom engine that has to solve various problems in physics and ballistics and graphics and uh, all kinds of, you know, technical issues that need to be solved. So they're not easy to make. Um, and they do enjoy kind of a small marketplace uh, 
unlike other games like shooters or strategy games. Um, but there, you know, I, I see a lot of discussion about business models and stuff about combat flight sims and why we don't have more of them and how can they make more money because a lot of them don't seem to make a lot of money. And that's true that some of them don't make a lot of money, but some of them do. And I know how to make a combat flight sim profitable. I've done it a couple times before. Uh, but it takes a lot of... You have to get a lot of things right to be able to garner the attention and the affection of the community who want to invest their hard-earned money into your product. So just getting to that kind of base level of of uh, it, uh, of technical uh, accomplishment to get the attention from potential customers is a pretty high bar. So that's why making these games are so difficult is because whenever you try to take shortcuts, which has been attempted in the past, these shortcuts don't typically work. You just end up pissing off your, your potential customers and then they don't purchase the product. So it is a gamble, but we are willing to, to attempt to make a combat flight sim. And we think that with the experience we have, the, the financial backing we have, and the people we've hired so far, we think we have a good shot at, of getting it done. So you said the big P word, the Pacific. Yeah. And um, I thought this would be interesting to share with you. So we, we play a lot of different games on my Discord. And mm -hmm. uh, we were playing IL-2 1946, uh, which is like yeah. one of the all-time classics. And um, out of all the missions we have run, the one that was the most popular one was we ran a PvP dynamic campaign that was set in Guadalcanal. And then when we turned the server right. on, I think we had about 90 concurrent users all playing at the same time. And it's interesting because that game... <laughs> is like 20 years old and as soon as we turned it on and we said hey we're doing a pacific everyone flooded in people were buying the game and reinstalling it or whatever and there just seems to be an immense interest in pacific and i'm kind of curious with i mean you guys are basically gonna be the first ones doing the pacific and and basically forever so i'm kind of curious before we get into the specifics of, of, of combat pilot i'm kind of curious to see or understand what sort of inspiration were you guys kind of taking on for a combat pilot and kind of your general reaction of the continued interest in the Pacific? Well, my personal experience goes back before the original Sturmovic. Um, of course, there were Pacific themed products back way, way back in the day. And then I was involved as a third party developer with the, with the uh, large community led effort to build content for IL-2 Pacific fighters which then eventually morphed into 1946, and then all of the additional mods and additions that were added to 1946 moving forward. So um, I have great affinity for and love for the Pacific Fighters uh, product. And, uh, you know, playing playing the old Sturmovic, of course, is very nostalgic, and it's uh, 20 years old at this point. Um, there's just so much content that's been added to it over the years that you can almost create any potential World War II air combat, uh, scenario that you want. Uh, the Pacific has just always been an interesting theater, uh, primarily because you got aircraft carriers, you've got these exotic locations and islands that... Uh, are relatively small and innocuous, but then when you put them into the context of World War II, uh, places like Midway and Guadalcanal and the Solomon Islands and New Guinea and, you know, all these little tiny, not even tiny, but out-of-the-way places become strategically important to the world powers and major battles were fought over them. And sometimes you look back and you're like, why were we fighting over this little tiny island in the middle of the Pacific? But back <laughs> yeah. then it was a hugely important location. Um, it just, and it, it, it's just a very unique uh, and epic. If you if you ever use the word epic, uh, the struggle in the Pacific definitely fits. And there are so many heroes and villains and 
and, techn and air different aircraft and iconic aircraft and uh, big, large capital ships and aircraft carriers that duked it out all the way across the Pacific and eventually to the depths of Japan. I mean, it's just a very interesting period in World War II. And as an American, there's the Pacific War invokes a little bit of a different feeling than the European theater. Uh, the Pacific, in the Pacific, obviously, Japan attacked America. Uh, in World War II, the European front began with the Nazi conquest of Poland and elsewhere, uh, and we were dragged into the European theater, you know, two years after it started, basically. In the Pacific, they attacked us. Next thing you know, we're at war with the Empire of Japan, and then we have to also go fight the Nazis in Europe. So the Pacific holds a different place in the American psyche as far as the importance because it was it was our war that was brought to us and we had to to go and fight back and uh the the sheer scale of it to to fight all over the Pacific and the amount of industrial might that was needed to to do that is just a very unique American story so Growing up as a kid and listening to my grandparents talk about that period of history always fascinated me. And it's just a little bit different. It just, as the kids say, it just hits a little bit different when I think of the Pacific War as opposed to the European theater. It is interesting. It, and it is exotic, but it's also, yeah, it's kind of interesting how you, you answered that question. Because it is exotic, but it's also, in a way, it was the... Uh, American war because it came to us so it's interesting if you think about it that way okay so yeah. let's um, let's dive into the game and let me preface by saying this is early stages you guys are working on it the announcement of the game was kind of a I think it's fair to call it maybe like a soft launch uh, in terms of yeah, an announcement. yeah exactly yeah so so I um, not to scold people but I'm going to scold some people a little bit but um, I felt bad a little bit for you because I noticed the second you uh, said, hey, combat pilot's a thing and it's coming, uh, people were getting in the weeds really quickly and asking right. about, about, are we going to have this button modeled or whatever? And um, I do not care about that at all. What I would really like to get out of this conversation is to understand, as kids, see, as the kids say this, uh, these days, what's the overall vibe going to be? And when I think about combat flight sims in, in terms of the market and the players in there, you have DCS, right? And when you think about DCS, or when I say DCS, people immediately think full fidelity, jets, a uh, wide range of eras. When I say IL-2 great battles, people think about uh, coherent and cohesive plane sets, um, very immersive, but really intimate small scale. And then ILT 1946, the least amount of fidelity, but the most scale that offers the basically unlimited types of theaters and options and, and, and et cetera. So what do you want people to think about when I say combat pilot? Like, what is the overall vibe going to be? Well, I hope the vibe will be, uh, you know, sun, sand, surf, and burning flat tops. I mean, uh, I want it to be the vibe you know, however you want to define the word vibe, uh, I want it to be, uh, you know, amazing visuals with amazing technology and amazing combat and, of course, amazingly modeled airplanes and ships uh, duking it out, uh, both in single-player and multiplayer environments that give a, 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 a grand scale and scope of what the Pacific War actually was. Uh, to back up to your previous question, you know, the Pacific Theater really hadn't been done in, in 20 years. I mean, there's been other attempts, and you can play, you know, you can fly Pacific uh, uh, Theater aircraft in, in games like War Thunder and elsewhere, including the old, you know, 1946. But we just felt it was time for somebody to try to crack that nut. And uh, there are some challenges to building the Pacific uh, but we hope to overcome those uh, by great research, uh, talented people being involved, and um, you know being creative and finding solutions to longstanding problems. 
Uh, but the vibe for Combat Pilot, like I said, I hope it to be grand in scale and and and, and beautiful visuals that we have never really seen before uh, on our computer screens. So it's going to be a whenever you make a flight sim or combat flight sim, uh, it's not it's not one thing that simmers are looking for. It's a combination of things that give you the overall picture and vibe of, of what the product is and it's a you know it's a combination of, of features technology content and community uh connections that they're looking for and if you can take the what i call the four pillars of of a, a combat flight sim and, and and combine them into a really solid product that works that looks good that has great gameplay options um then you'll have success and you'll have plenty of customers and you can keep uh, keep developing so that's that's kind of the overall vibe it's hard to say because we don't know exactly how this feature or that feature is going to turn out yet and like you said when we first did our our initial soft launch and announced the existence of combat pilot uh you know definitely people hit us with lots of technical questions on how things are going to work and i all i can say is i have my plans on how things are going to work my partners have plans on how they want things to work the community has ideas of how they want things to work and my job as executive producer is to take what people want what we think is possible what technology we have who do we have to to work with that technology and mold it into a product that's usable performs well and is enticing and interesting to the end user. So I've tried to do that in the past. I think I did a pretty good job. I hope that uh, with Combat Pilot, we'll be able to uh, to be even better. What do you, I think you said something interesting. Um, you're, you're sitting in the middle. There's the ambitions of the internal team. There's the ambitions of players and what they want. So it would be, I would be really curious to hear what you think players want out of a combat flight sim? Well, this is this gets into my secret sauce because I've spent 15 plus years and even longer playing these games, of course, but listening to users and trying to understand what people want. And in my old job, what I what what customers wanted and what I was able to bring them often were often were diametrically opposed only because I either didn't have the budget or the people or the approval or most importantly, the willingness of my business partners to go tackle these issues. And at times it became very frustrating. But uh, the community wants a lot of different things. And uh, let's just say that the community has different types of users who have different goals in mind that can vary by geographic reason uh, region it can vary by age there's a lot of different what i'm getting at is there's there's no one way to play or to or to enjoy a combat flight sim and if you put it's kind of interesting uh if you put all your eggs in one basket there's a high chance of failure if you try to take shortcuts, there's a high chance of failure. And if you try to be everything to everyone, there's a high chance of failure. And you can what's interesting is you can find exceptions to every one of those rules. Um, and it's tricky. When it comes to a hardcore sim, what I've found is that, that there's, I don't want to say too much because I've got market data here that I think is valuable and I don't want to, give it away uh to my competition but there are different subsets of players who are all looking for a different thing and who demand a different level of fidelity or a different type of feature or uh, a different subset of content to make them happy and i've been trying over the years to quantify and qualify what those different subsets of users are and what they're looking for so with combat pilot i hope and I think I've identified 
the different types of players and what they're looking for. And I hope that with enough money and a large enough team, we can satisfy most or all of those different groups of people who are looking for something slightly different. So I look at uh, I look at the product as we have to do everything well to make enough people happy to get them to buy the product. So I, that sounds kind of cryptic, and I'm being a little bit evasive, but um, I have spent a lot of time studying people's behavior in this market, and uh, it's interesting. Uh, but uh, I don't want to put all our eggs in one basket, but in the beginning here, we're gonna only we're not gonna have everything everybody wants. Think of it as a as a sculpture. You have a big block of marble or granite or something, and you want to turn that into a masterpiece uh, sculpture. You start chipping away at it, and over time, it starts to take shape and start to look like something interesting. And it's gonna be the same thing here with Combat Pilot. Uh, there's no way I can go from zero to a polished product in a set in a given amount of time and know exactly how much money it's going to take and know exactly when we'll be finished because the more we we build the foundation which we're doing now then we have different features and different bits of technology that we need to to work on to get to the next step and it's going to be hopefully a 5 to 10 year process of 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 sculpting combat pilot into a very very fine and uh amazing product or product line uh, over time kind of like what i did before but hopefully we will make better decisions earlier on that will uh help us down the road uh, to get to that final masterpiece uh, a bit faster i believe Combat Pilot is going to be using the Unreal Engine. How liberating is it to work on a Combat Flight Sim now with uh, with an engine like Unreal? Because I think this is an interesting question because the current sims in, in the market right now have been basically on the same engines for like ever, and everyone knows the limitations with with each of them. So I just I'm curious to see where you go with this question. Well, we haven't initially we haven't officially announced what engine we're using, but let me look at this as a hypothetical okay uh, let's assume we're using the unreal engine and uh you know we think it can do the job even if we did use the unreal engine we're going to have to come up with custom solutions to uh, many different uh, aspects uh, especially in the flight modeling and physics uh, category uh, but having a, an off-the-shelf engine that has support for all the latest graphical uh, graphical enhancements that are possible, PBR textures, ray tracing, uh, you know, all the stuff that's available today. Again, I'm not a graphics programmer, so I won't go in the weeds on that. But you know, there's new ways to texture things. There's uh, there's uh, uh, routines in the engine that can uh, and technologies available to us that will allow us to uh, do things faster, do things better, uh, without us having to invent the technology ourselves. So by using an off-the-shelf engine as your foundation, in theory, you can take, you can get to an end result that allows your product to compete in the marketplace quicker, but at the same time, there could be limitations to that technology uh, in that engine that would force you to find a custom solution for any given thing. Now, I don't want to go too far into it because I don't want to I don't want to give people too much information because we simply don't know the final answer to that because we're still in the early stages and right now our main goal is to make our aircraft fly in the engine. Like for instance, we have uh, four engineers working on uh, Combat Pilot, and our first step is to connect the engine to our aircraft, so the aircraft can move through 3D space. Then we have to 
give those aircraft a flight model uh, to work with so they can fly in a historical and realistic manner. So those are like the early things that we're working on and we're making progress. And then we have really talented certified aerospace engineers uh, working on uh, our flight modeling and physics. So that will be the, the big goal for the first year. Uh, and then once we have that, we will be able to start uh, connecting it to our geospatial solution to give you the environment in which you're going to fly in. And we're just in the very early stages of working on that. So, yes, using something like Unreal can give you a, a head start let's call it, and there's lots of off-the-shelf uh, plugins and other people, including Epic, that are constantly improving the engine uh, to do different things. So using Unreal is not out of the realm of possibility, and it, it can be a, uh, a good thing uh, for flight simming. And everybody knows that there are several defense industry companies working with Unreal, uh, for their, you know, defense-minded simulations uh, using Unreal, so it's not out of the que it's not out of the question for sure. Okay, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna try to avoid asking very specific questions. Sure. Whatever you want to do, you ask me anything you want. But I just don't know if my answer will satisfy everybody. Well, no, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I, I do have one question because uh, I'm getting I'm getting a sense of the vibe. But but one thing that I think that will really help for people to understand is if you think about like a, like a scatter plot, right? And, and one of the axes is fidelity and the other axis is scale. And by scale, I'm talking about like number of planes, number of engines, yeah. like, like, like four engine bombers, whatever, mm -hmm. like, you know, all the current games kind of sit in different places on that, on, on that scatter plot. Right. And IL-2 1946, for example, would be the least amount of fidelity and the most amount of scale. And that's why that game has, after all this time, people still play because it's really the only one that can do it. And DCS is like the complete opposite. It's like all fidelity, but very limited scale. Yeah, okay. So I, I would be really interested in understanding where's the ambition or the hope for Combat Pilot? Like, are you guys really... Because I, I think a lot of people, when they heard Combat Pilot, like some people immediately thought, like, "Oh, this is going to be like the spiritual successor of the IL-2 1946 uh, Pacific Fighters, and it's going to have a lot of scale with it because it won't be restrained by uh, the current engine limitations that we all know about." Right. So I just, I'm curious if you can go a little bit more into detail about that. Yeah, so I'm people sorry, can I, I didn't. I I think I skipped over some of your previous question. Um, no, we plan on having a very high fidelity simulation. That's the goal. Uh, I don't know at this point. I can't honestly say if every button is going to be interactive and every uh, knob and switch and 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 uh, piece of technology that was on a World War II aircraft will be modeled in Combat Pilot. I simply don't know because we haven't built that system yet. Um, our main focus is on physics and flight modeling here early on. But our goal is to be a high fidelity product that will satisfy, hopefully, people who play DCS, people who play War Thunder, people who play IL-2, people who play Cliffs of Dover, uh, or maybe even Microsoft Flight Simulator. So my, over, my overarching design philosophy is I have enough experience in this industry to know people like that feature, people like this feature, people like that level of detail, people like these gameplay options. And I'm hoping to take the best of what exists and hopefully find a way to support it in Combat Pilot. So that's the only way that our product is going to be good enough and big enough to, to garner the attention that it's going to need to make money. So... That's that's why, you know, I think uh, Barbed Wire wanted to work with me is because I've I've been somebody who's tried to do that with previous products. And uh, even though I wasn't able to do everything I wanted to do with those products, I at least understand what the customer might be looking for and who those customers are. So fidelity. Yes, we want to have a very high fidelity experience. 
but I don't know exactly what that will entail at this early stage. All I can say is many the, the, the general answer to most of these questions, unfortunately, right now at this early stage is going to be maybe or I hope to. And, you know, let's see what happens. So that's that's a cop out. But honestly, it's it's the best answer I can give. But I can tell people I can tell you that our discussions with the engineering team at barbed wire, uh, which, by the way, is a separate entity called Entropy Arrow, which is a subsidiary of barbed wire now. So uh, Combat Pilot will be built under the, the brand of Entropy Arrow. Uh, so all of us at Entropy Arrow are very concerned about fidelity and realism and making the game as interactive and realistic as our team can possibly make it. Whether or not we get there, you know, that's an open question. But time will tell. We're going to give it our best shot. I don't think it's a cop-out. I, uh, you know, it's uh, managing expectations. The project's still new. Uh, but I do think it is interesting to hear about the ambition. Um, yeah, the ambition is there. The ambition is definitely there. Okay, and then, um, and just the last part of this question, and then we'll, we'll move on to something sure. else, which is, uh, so, so the fidelity question has been answered um, in terms of, like, the ambition. And, and what about the, the scale of the project? And, and by scale, I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, four engine bombers or, or the, yeah. like, moving AI and, and multiplayer stuff like this. I know that's, like, oddly specific, but I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. No, uh, the scale, uh, we hope to be quite large. Uh, with modern technologies, we believe we can model huge areas of uh, the globe. Uh, the Pacific obviously had a lot of water, uh, but the water itself becomes the landscape. So the water needs to be really cool. Uh, the the land masses are it, in some places extremely complicated because they're either atolls or they're island change or archipelagos or even large land masses like uh, New Guinea's an island, but it's quite large. Um, places like Midway and Wake are relatively small. And then there's all the other, you know, the Philippines is a large land mass as well. So it just depends where we end up going. But the scope of it, we, we plan to make it quite large. That's the goal. Um, can we stuff a couple hundred planes and a hundred capital ships on the in, in the battle space at the same time and have them fly and fight uh without your computer you know crashing and 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 burning up um we don't know quite yet obviously every solution that we build for both single player and multiplayer my goal is to keep the scope in mind to give users uh the the feeling that they're part of a very large battle now and and of course, a lot of these battles in the Pacific, you know, especially after carrier operations became the norm, there weren't a lot of surface-to-surface -surface combat, right? Uh, Midway was fought between two carrier groups that did never engage each other directly outside of their aircraft. Um, that's not too difficult to model. But what if, because what if, I know users will do this, we know that users are going to create missions to say, I want... I want the Yamato to engage with, you know, a, a Iowa class battleship and put them in the same battle space, which is going to create all kinds of havoc and all kinds of crazy scenarios and lots and lots of polygons and lots and lots of shooting going on. So we're going to have to find creative ways to make those kinds of engagements possible. Um, so we have the ambition to make it a large scope. We have the desire to make big battles with lots of aircraft and ships in the frame at the same time, but we have to find, you know, technical solutions to those answers. Um, obviously, when you look at what our friends at the Task Force Admiral are doing with their with their game, they have found ways to put beautiful looking ships and lots of aircraft and any aircraft fire and torpedoes in the water and all kinds of stuff with. Uh, with their engine but you know it, it's more it's more of a strategy game than a first person experience so you know their ships and some of their some of their uh visuals are not necessarily yet at least up to the standard that we're looking for um but you know we hope to 
we hope to find solutions to those questions of you know how do we how do we give the player an amazing epic experience uh with large scope and you know intense combat that will really you know scratch that itch that right now the best way to get that is through you know il2 1946 um il2 1946 when you play on that scope that that level with that scope uh which what you guys were doing with your server and, and others have done um it's it's possible if you can do it there you can do it here it's just a matter of you know how what level of of fidelity or visuals or tactics are you going for so it's going to be a challenge this is one of our main challenges how do we represent the scope of the pacific war in a both super interesting and enjoyable you know manner so it's definitely a challenge i don't know the answer to that yet but i certainly have learned from my previous experience some things not to do uh so i will try to learn from those uh, experiences and not fall into the same issues with combat pilot can we talk a little bit about the business model you guys sure. are still where well, you guys are still building it and uh the business model differs a lot in the in the olden days uh you know everything was 50 dollars a pop and then you would buy 25 dollars expansion packs um some games yeah. subscription models like aces high and world Two online i don't know if did you ever play world Two online actually I did play it for a little while. It never fully captured my attention, but uh, I did. I did play it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to really like that game. But uh, anyway, so you know, subscription models, and then DCS has the whole. Uh, technically, it's free to play, and then you buy uh, the you know individual mod modules. IL two great battles, which I actually thought had the the most competitive uh, or, uh, business model, which is you know the thematic plane sets, the map comes with it and then microsoft flight simulator has their whole ecosystem so i'm kind of curious if yeah. you guys uh i mean I'm, I'm guessing you guys look at all those kind of yeah. what, what are you guys thinking about for combat pilot well i don't know what the end result will end up being um i've been listening to the recent conversation amongst our fans on discord talking about business models um of course i have my experience with with Sturmovic, and i and i've seen you know what kind of money a game like Sturmovic can generate, and what kind of profits you can generate from that. Um, I know, you know, obviously there's a DCS model. Um, we had a we had a free to play model with a Rise of Flight uh, years ago um, that ended up working out for us in the long run. Um, but some people uh, that I was involved with didn't like it. Um, I never was able to release a free demo for. IL-2 Sturmovic Great Battles because of resistance within the company. Um, I believe that there are many different solutions to finding a business model that works for your product. Personally, as you've seen in the past, I like to offer a good value for our users and our, and our customers. I believe in reasonably priced products. And I also believe in options. Uh, so... I kind of envision for Combat Pilot, I envision a hybrid model where there's something for everybody, right? Um, some flight simmers, God bless them, they are willing to throw you, throw as much money at you as possible as they can afford if it means that development and improvements will continue into the future for whatever sim you're making. And then there are the budget gamers who just, they don't have as much money and they, you know buying a $89 product on day one is outside of their their ability. So I'd like to offer aggressive sales to attract those users uh, to the to the community. Um, there's also talk of subscription models and things of that nature. I'm not opposed to a subscription model, but it shouldn't be the only choice is what I'm saying. So if if I can have a hybrid system where some people can be early adopters and give us all their money or lots of money, or they can pay extra to get a little bit extra bit of content or special feature or or some kind of buff that they absolutely love. Um, that's a possibility. I believe in pricing things that most people can afford on a budget or giving them the option of 
piecing together various bits of content to create a package for themselves that that they feel happy paying a price for and then i also believe that there might be some people who say hey i just want to i just want to pay you 40 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month whatever the number is i i don't mean to use specific numbers but let's say it's 20 bucks a month uh and and subscribe to a three-year subscription and in those three years i get every bit of content that you make um and i can rely on that amount of money coming in every month uh and then hopefully use that money wisely to to build out more content and features for all the other uh customers that might use it that might want to pay us in a different way so i just believe in options and i've always believed in in giving people different opportunities uh to buy your product so i'm not going to say right now what exactly we're going to do on the business model i have many different ideas i have experience with with the great battles and rise of flight um all i can say is there is plenty of money out there if you have a quality product there are plenty of flight simmers that will buy your product and you can make a profit you might not be profitable in the first year or two but you, you kind of have to work towards a tipping point where once you get to that tipping point every bit of content you make after that combined with the earlier content makes you profitable on a monthly or yearly basis i reached that point with il2 great battles and it took us a while to get there but we got there so i know a lot of people think that that team and everything we we're doing with great battles was hand to mouth there got there came a point in time where that was not the case but unfortunately i was unable to continue with the company and i was unable to utilize that profit for the greater good they're doing that now and i don't want to get into that because some of some of what they're doing now really pisses me off but I, all i can say is for combat pilot i'm going to hopefully offer enough purchase options to make as many people happy as possible now in the beginning when we don't have a lot of content that's a little more difficult but a year you know five years from now when i have enough content to offer different packages and different ways to purchase the product then i you know i'll be open i'll be way uh, very much open to having different different options for purchasing great so i would like to transition over to multiplayer really quickly mm -hmm. just for a bit and i don't think i don't think we can spend too much time on here because it's, this is probably too too well, it's early but yeah but uh, yeah but um you're not saying it i'm saying it so yeah in current games, I believe there's a massive focus on single player. And in some ways, some could argue that multiplayer seems to be kind of an afterthought. Multiplayer, in my opinion, is where the actual game is because players will push the planes and environments to the actual limits. And that's really like multiplayer ends up becoming the forefront of, of, the, of the community. So I'm kind of curious on your thoughts about multiplayer. Okay, well, the reason... There, there's kind of a basic reason why single player sucks up so much uh, resources and time uh, is because to give single player, single player customers the experience that they're looking for takes a lot more effort because you're having to 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 make the AI and and script the missions and build the environment and the behavior of your opponents to give you the experience you're looking for, right? Uh in multiplayer, you're interacting with humans that are all that are that are that are that are fulfilling the work that is typically done by scripting and the AI and all these other elements that combine to give an engaging single player experience. When you do multiplayer, it's basically humans are filling all the roles for the most part and the behavior and the gameplay is 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 one is it's what do you call it uh it's extremely fluid because they're humans making the decisions not just you know the ai running routines and, and scripts and stuff so uh it seems like developers have to focus a lot of attention on single player but it's more of a function of of how to get single player to be 
engaging for most players. And in multiplayer, you don't have to spend the amount of resources necessary to make multiplayer fun and engaging because actually it's humans that are actually, you know, doing doing things and in, in, in behaviors that are making the, the multiplayer environment fun. I more or less come from a multiplayer background. I cut my teeth in the early 2000s, uh, you know, doing multiplayer in the original IL-2 Sturmovik and other flight sims. For me, interacting with real humans and flying and fighting against real humans was more of an interesting challenge, kind of like what you're saying. But there are many, many players who play single player, who want to have a certain experience, and they, they, they're not comfortable playing multiplayer for whatever reason. Maybe they have a bad internet connection. Maybe they just don't like getting shot down by other humans. Maybe they like an easier, easier challenge. So they like to play uh, single player where they can adjust the the level of difficulty. Um, the multiplayer is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It's just to satisfy a large portion of your user base, you have to focus quite a bit of resources on single player. And there's getting back to some of your earlier questions there's there's a certain level of features that flight combat flight simulators are looking for a lot of those features revolve around single player uh and then in the multiplayer space uh there's a certain minimum that you have to create to, to get people interested in multiplayer my goal for combat pilot is i want to i want to meet the minimum requirements as soon as possible so we have a functioning well-rounded product but it's only going to be it's only going to be successful after we reach those minimum requirements and then above and beyond those minimum requirements is where you get to innovate and create new experiences that customers are interested in i it's funny because one c like they tried to they tried to, to poke me uh, yesterday in their statement about their new product. I'll just give an example. So in multiplayer, we had multiplayer in Great Battles, and it worked relatively well. Uh, however, there were other features and other experiences that I thought and others thought would enhance the multiplayer experience. They could be an online persistent campaign system uh that that people want to enjoy or it could be uh the air marshal feature that i tried to build for Sturmovik, where there are people directing the battle uh for example um there are ways to innovate and improve beyond the bare minimum uh, experience and multiplayer is one of those areas where folks like the team at combat box have gone out of their way to make a really engaging, amazing multiplayer experience in Sturmovik or in Great Battles uh, through their own efforts and their own creativity. Multiplayer is the area I feel that has the most, it's more of a, it has the, uh, what's the right word? It's um, the opportunities to make multiplayer more exciting. Uh, that is the area where innovation, I think, there's more potential innovation in multiplayer than, say, in single player, in my mind, when I think about combat flight sims. However, multiplayer is a complex environment because you're dealing with human players. You're dealing with lots of information being passed around between servers and, and clients. So it's not an easy thing to build, per se. But there's a lot of things that can be done in the multiplayer space to, to innovate and give users a, a really fun experience. And I applaud anybody like Combat Box and others uh, in the Sturmovik space that have taken uh, that system and innovated on their own to make it a more uh, engaging and entertaining experience. And then the single player, there's other ways to innovate in the single player space as well, but it's just a, it's just a function of how you have to build these things. And single player takes a lot of effort to make the single player experience exceptional and in multiplayer it's it, it's 
it's more of a sandbox where if you have the technology, you can give users the the basics and then they can just run with it and do all kinds of cool stuff. But I hope with Combat Pilot that we'll be able to innovate in the multiplayer space um, whenever we get to that point. Multiplayer right now is far away from us uh, because we haven't, you know, we don't have the, it's not in our current schedule to tackle multiplayer. Um, that's more of a, a second or third year uh, activity for us. Hope that answers your question. No, it does. I would imagine that's a weird feeling too, because you build something and then you give it to the players and then people like <laughs> the finish server, the combat box, then they just like turn around and like build something. I, I don't know. Like, what does, it, what does that feel like when you, when you see what they do? You're like, whoa, like I didn't even expect that. Like, I didn't even know that was possible or, or you're like, oh, neat. They actually did that. I, I, I would imagine that's kind of a neat feeling. It's a neat feeling to know that people care enough about your product that they want to innovate and help you and make it better. Um, but it's also frustrating in the sense that like, hey, why don't I have the resources to do this myself? And um, that was a constant battle at my old position where I wanted to do things and I didn't have the support from the company or I didn't have the budget to hire the people necessary or a bu other bunch of bullshit that I won't get into. But um, I am, and this this will go into probably one of your other questions, is yes, uh, I am very open to working with third parties in the community that have good ideas, that have experience doing these types of things. And if it's possible for us to work together to either design something that they want or the customers want or help us solve a technical issue, there's a lot of talented people out there. And I'm not opposed to working with those those folks uh, in the future. Uh, right now, it's not really possible because we're so early on and we're working on the you know, the, the, the basics. But um, I have a long history of working with third parties who want to help uh, the team. And I've had some successes. I've had some failures in that regard. But um, it's always interesting to see when you give the, when you when you give the community the tools or the uh, ability to interact with your game in a completely independent way and create something on their own and they actually make something really amazing it, it's really cool to see i'm i really like it actually i, I think it's i think it's cool so I, I mentioned this in a video which i posted i think it was this week was this week i'm still getting so old i can't remember anymore oh yeah that was this week <laughs> um where I, ref, I i referenced um some teases that came out about combat pilot i don't know if you saw the video but uh one thing that got mentioned was uh that i was the most excited about um well, actually, for let me start over. So, Combat Pilot excites me for for three reasons. One, it's starting with the clean slate, mm -hmm. and to me, that's interesting because it doesn't have a lot of baggage from the from the previous projects, and the, you right. know, the, and it's just it's. I mean, the grass is always greener, sure, but you know, we don't have like I, I don't I don't I don't really want to get into this, but you know, each each current game right now has a limitation, and everyone knows about it, and everyone is like trying their hardest to get around it, and like. It's like walking on eggshells and it just it gets just it's tiresome. So I mean yeah. I'm excited for that part. Two, you're involved and um I think that's that's nice because it it doesn't feel like well it probably feels like it for you but not, but not for me, but it for me it's like I it's easy for me to have faith in this project because you've done it before with 77 Studios, with Rise of Flight and and Great Battles, so um the competency is clearly there. And the third thing is and, oh, and along with that Barbed Wire Studios is involved. Because I really like those guys, I really yeah. like Osfront. They really care about multiplayer, and um, they seem like they're willing to answer answer a lot of questions and, and be involved. And the third thing is, I know that the I, I've never talked to them too much, but I, I've seen because you know everyone in IL two has seen if you're in it for long enough, you, everyone knows each other. I, I do know that some of the people in Barbar Bar Studios are huge fans of. Uh, the CO system, the Scorched Earth Online Warfare system, the dynamic campaign yeah. system that 46 had. Right. And uh, when they mentioned that uh, that was an ambition, that got me really excited. So I am curious, like, have yeah. you experienced that system at all, like from a, from a player? Kind of just kind of curious to see where you go with this. Yeah, not 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 lately, but back in the day when it was all the rage. Yeah. Um, no, we we our ambition is to make something like that for Combat Pilot. And I know and you're correct. Uh, I believe it was Carlos that made some comments about um, 
wanting to create and support a similar feature in Combat Pilot. Um, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. It's just a matter of when can we get to that? At what point in our development will we will we be able to focus on multiplayer and create such a such a system? Um, so th the willingness is there. It's just a matter of when can we get to it? And um, you know, I was never able to do quite the same thing at Great Battles. Uh, so there are everything, everything. You know, there's there's that saying that everything old is new again. So I'm trying to more or less have a similar uh, a similar uh, uh, approach here where let's go back and look at some of these older products that did some things very, very well that people liked. And can we duplicate that, replicate it, improve on it or or use something in combat pilot that we know people will like? So, again, creating an all star product that takes the. The, the maybe the fidelity level of DCS and the 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 uh, playability and cohesiveness and comprehensive approach that Sturmovic does and the campaign system or or career mode that maybe some European air war had and then take the dynamic dynamic kind of campaign uh, system that Falcon had like in in pull in the, the best elements from all the best flight sims over the years and hopefully put that into one product that will get people excited. But again, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. I That's the goal for me, but you know, we'll see if we get there. But we were, we're going to try. And in the early beginnings here, we're focused on making a quality flying experience first and foremost, getting familiar with the elements of the engine that we need solving things like our geospatial solution and then of course building you know beautiful airplanes and ships to to put into the engine that will give people the the, the look and feel that they're that they want so there's a lot of different moving parts and elements here that only time will tell this is my last potentially annoying question but on paper, they're not annoying. They're just they're just questions I can't give you concrete answers to. You know, at this early stage. Yeah, but I mean, this one is potentially annoying, and, and this will be the, the last one that's potentially annoying. But is um, and I'm not holding you to a number, but 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 on paper or in theory, how long does it take to make a combat flight sim? Well, with a big enough team, you can get a lot done in the first couple of years. Um, but in my experience, even with a, a fully funded and operational team um making something that i want to make uh with all the features not not all the content but all the features that i want to make um with your average size team with a budget of x I, it's going to take us about five years to make to go from zero to a hundred and then once we get to a hundred there might be changes we want to make. There might be things that work or don't work that well that we have to, you know, change or we want to change. Or maybe there's a new, uh, a new thing we want to add. So I see this as a 15-year-long project uh, because there's five years of initial development to polish it to make it a marketable, successful product. Then there's another five to 10 years of making additional content and improving upon the existing technologies to give uh, to give users uh, the experience that they're looking for. So this product line can have a long shelf life. But with Combat Pilot, I've, I view this as a very lengthy product product development future that's going to take many, many years. But at every step of the way, I hope we're offering something interesting and new uh, to users that will convince them to, to give us their money. But it takes, it, at a minimum, it takes a couple years to make something viable. So, so you mentioned third-party help. Uh, you know, I, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about that as uh, community members, maybe server owners, whatever, that, mm -hmm. that will help. But uh, are you, let me say it this way. What sort of help are you looking for? I mean, this is a, a platform. Maybe someone is out there who, uh, I don't know, works in this space. But uh, are you looking for any sort of help right now in terms of anything, uh, engineers or researchers or anything like that? Well, we've hired, we have about total within, within, 
within the team, either people who are troubleshooters or people who are full-time or people who are part-time on the team. Right now we have about 15 people uh, total uh, to just make this early prototype that does a few things. Um, so right now, the biggest issue I have is just with research. Um, hey, you know, I was looking for information on some anti-aircraft guns and, you know, bits and pieces to various airplanes or access to, to, to information that I'm looking for. So right now, the, the primary help I need is simply just finding information or finding reference material or uh, pictures of, of aircraft or guns that we need or ships. Um, in the future, there may be opportunities to, well, I'm sure there will be opportunities to to work with us either in the programming or design uh, for that matter. But uh, right now, it's primarily just to help with research and understanding, you know, where can I find information on this or that? Um, and, and the community stepped up big time. Like I've I've been able to locate important information and and reference material uh, that we need to build uh, things things for Combat Pilot. Uh, but in the future, we'll definitely have job opportunities for people that have the skill set that, that have skill sets that we might need. Um, but right now, we have our budget for our first year. We have the team that we formed, and we're you know working towards that goal uh, to reach next year. And then we'll, as we go along, at some point, we'll probably end up hiring more people to do different things. But um, if you're somebody in the community that has skills, programming skills, modeling skills, uh, game design background, uh, or Maybe you have experience with uh, GUIs or, um, you know, uh, in, uh, controllers or whatever that may be. Yeah, we may be looking for you in the future. Any sort of uh, lessons from other flight sims that you're taking to heart as you guys approach this project? No, definitely. Um, I don't want to get into them because I don't want to. I don't want to give away the farm here. Um, I'm always trying to learn how to do things better. Uh, and I've always listened closely to my customers and trying to understand what they're looking for. Um, the, the, the biggest takeaway from my past experiences are just uh, when there's a problem that seems to be intractable, an intractable problem that it just you can't solve, take the path of least resistance so you can move on and and, and move on to other other things that are that are possibly more important um, in flight simming in combat f sims in general we get hung up both as developers and as community members on really minute details that some people feel are very 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 important and in some and sometimes you make decisions that can anger a lot of customers and even though you think your solution is the right one based on empirical empirical evidence or historical evidence if the customers don't like your solution for whatever reason you should listen to them and adjust accordingly i tried to do that in the past and um sometimes i was successful and a few times i was not but um my biggest takeaway is you have to you have to Take the path of least resistance with your customer base so people stay as happy as possible. You know, you, angry customers are not loyal customers. Let's put it that way. Don't be so stubborn to think you have all the answers all the time. Anything you want to get out in, into the world, into the, uh, you know, what, what, do you, what do you want to scream out into the ether? Anything uh, that's on your mind? Well, first, I want to say thank you to everybody uh, who's joined our forum or joined our discord or uh, communicated or tried to help us early on uh, it's tremendous to see the amount of uh, excitement and anticipation and uh, appreciation that tor towards us for taking on the pacific theater and trying to make something new and exciting um, i've always thanked our customers and people who have supported us because 
projects like this can't ever fully get off the ground without a community uh, behind them. And flight simmers and combat flight simmers are a special breed of gamer that um, really are passionate about the subject matter and about the genre. And I'm I love the fact that I've been able to play a role in keeping this uh, genre moving forward and producing a lot of cool stuff over the years. Uh, I hope the combat pilot, as I get older, um, I hope the combat pilot will turn into a very uh, monumental and important franchise for combat flight sims. Um, so thank you to everybody who's participated and joined our community over the past few months. Um, I also just want to give a general update uh, to the project. Um, we are building the Wildcat, as you've seen, and we're building the Zero, as you've seen. We are also building uh, lots of scenery objects, or started to build lots of scenery objects that will be used to uh, populate the, the Midway uh, Atoll. Um, when we get into more of the terrain building um, part of it. And just recently, we signed a contract to build our two uh, aircraft carriers, uh, the Akagi and the Enterprise, uh, which we hope will be a really awesome looking ships and that you'll be able to, to, to fly and or land and take off from uh, early on in our, uh, our, 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 our our project so we've got all of the at this point in the project we've got the team our initial team our core team building all of the content that we plan to build for the first year and we're working on our flight dynamics and physics to make that wildcat and zero be able to fly realistically and effectively uh, in 3d space and uh I just want everybody to know we're working as hard as we can uh, to get there. But the first year, I ask that people just have patience with us because we're a new team, small. Right now, it's a small project with modest goals. And the amount of information that come out from us in this first year or so is going to be relatively small and not all that impressive because we're building the fundamentals that hopefully we'll be able to add to in later years. Uh, so just keep an eye on us. Check out our website, check out our forum, engage with us, have fun on the Discord. Um, you know, Join our socials, whether it's Facebook or X or Twitter, whatever they're calling it these days. Um, you know, Just be part of the community and hopefully as we move along and show you more of what we're working on, it, it becomes a product that uh, you become interested in buying, uh, you know, in the future. So patience, you know, participation is welcome. And, uh, you know, hopefully just, you know, keep, keep an eye on us is all I'm saying. Well, I appreciate it. It's early days. Uh, I'm sure it's going to take years. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many. Uh, I don't, and I'm sure you don't want to say, how, how, you know, how long it'll take before it's, available to players so we'll avoid that but um well I'm, i will I'm say gonna... that I, I will say that i would like to make something available to players as soon as possible now that might that might not include combat it might just include some flying two good looking planes and landing them on aircraft carriers uh or whatnot it it depends but we're open to giving something or putting something out there to sell as soon as we can. Not because we think it's perfect or because we're desperate for money or anything like that. Just we would like to share with you the fruits of our labor as soon as possible. And if that experience meets the standard that we set for quality, then you know we may release something sooner rather than later. But it still remains to be seen and things are still evolving and fluid you know, in these early months but we're doing our best. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because, hmm, actually, this just popped in my mind. It's interesting because this is probably the first, wait, is this right? Hold on, let me think about this. Am I gonna put my foot in my mouth? <laughs> mm -hmm. I always do it every interview. Do I gonna say something stupid? This might be the first combat flight sim 
that's coming that's net new like in the social media age and like with discord and everything mm. and like with youtube being really big so it's interesting because we're it'll you know we're we're so we're everyone's so aware of everything right so it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to kind of follow this and, and track the progress so it is exciting uh i'm excited uh you know you have my oh, passion and support good. you have well, my passion and support so uh, i'm you know i wish you guys well um wishing you all the luck um you know i'll uh i think i saw one of the one of your pe- people on your team saying that they want to help there's all there's there's uh you know as we wait I would recommend people to check out Called Arms Ozfront. Um, really good game. Also very reasonably reasonably priced. Um, and and yeah, I mean, we'll you know we'll hopefully we talk again uh, before it comes out as as, as things uh, come closer to release. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Enigma. I appreciate the time. I want to say before I go though that uh, you know you mentioned uh, the. the um, Call to Arms, Gates of Hell series uh, that Barbed Wire produces, which is primarily a, a it's, it's a tactical real time strategy game uh, set in World War II. Uh, their their current product, Ostfront, is uh, very successful and uh, it's a lot of fun. And that team at Barbed Wire has done an amazing job. And because of that, we've been able to form Entr- Entropy Arrow and uh, start working on uh, Combat Pilot. However, they just recently announced uh, Gates of Hell Liberation, which is the Western Front and Normandy. And uh, there's a, a video out there showing what you can expect from Gates of Hell Liberation. So if any of you out there are fans of the Gates of Hell, or Call to Arms Gates of Hell franchise, and want to support Barbed Wire and you want to support Entropy Arrow, uh, I encourage everybody to check out uh, uh, their Liberation product that's coming, uh, I believe, not too far away this year. So go check out the Gates of Hell Liberation to see what the Barbed Wire team is working on next. I always want to promote their work because they do indeed do good work, and they've made a commitment to the flight sim genre with Entropy Arrow and Combat Pilot and working with me. So I want to give I want to give them all the props in the world and hopefully. Uh, people in the uh, combat flight sim community will also check out their other products. It's funny. I was playing Ostfront the other day, and there's a map with a with a crash 109 on the ground. And yeah. I was I was zooming in and I was looking at the cockpit and I was like, what the hell? They actually modeled the right cockpit and everything. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's pretty surprising. The the uh, the the barbed wire team is very in uh, very interested in being historically accurate in everything that they do. So. That will rub off definitely on combat pilot for sure, and it already has. We're we're, we're doing everything we can to make our aircraft and ships uh, as, as historically accurate as we we can. All right, great. Thanks, Jason. Good luck. Thank you, Enigma. Appreciate the time. Yeah.